All right, time to check in with Tyler Orton from Business in Vancouver. Good morning, Tyler. How are you? Happy New Year. Oh, Happy New Year, Steve. So we're talking about uh, CEO compensation. What's this all about? Yeah, well, the Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives, it's a left-leaning think tank. Uh, they released their annual study on CEO compensation. The findings of the study found that uh, levels have now they're the highest that they've reached since before the 2008 uh, financial crash, since the recession happened. And they're actually going at a pace that's about double the pace of what the average Canadian uh, has seen their uh, compensation increase to. Now, think about it. Uh, the, the average uh, CEO income for 2013 was about $9 million, whereas the average Canadian income uh, for that year was $47,000. If we take a look at the boards, we can see just how much you know the top five CEOs are bringing in. Over at Onyx uh, Corporation, uh, Gerald Schwartz, uh, he's brought in $87.9 million. That's followed by Nandir Bohamed from Rogers, who brought in 267 million and uh, Michael Wilson from Agrium that brought in $23.8 million. If you take a look at the next guys, um, still big money. Uh, the big difference here uh, between uh, uh, the numbers two and three slot is like they both departed their companies uh, last year and they received uh, these one-time compensations. So what I, I should also mention, this is based on total compensation that everybody's getting. That includes stock options, bonuses, as well as the base salary. So the thing that we should keep in mind and, and that some people are raising concerns about is there's such an emphasis on the stock options that these guys are getting. And it, it could bring up concerns that if uh, they're getting so much compensation based on stock options, a lot of these CEOs could be a little bit more concerned about um, the short-term uh, revenue that they can generate for the companies. The other thing that I should bring up that other people are concerned about is uh, this kind of disparity between the average Canadian and the top CEOs. Uh, we're always hearing a, a lot about income inequality in Canada in, in much of the developed world. And this is just kind of showing that, that increasing gap that we're seeing uh, between, you know, the, the richest of the rich and just the mm -hmm. average Joe here in Canada. Right. But but then, you know, you look at a company like, you know, one of those big corporations that brings in, you know, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, whatever, and there's there's top CEOs making, you know, that amount of money. And I guess in, you know, a lot of people look at that and go, it's a lot of money, which it is a lot of money. But when you're bringing in that much money, you yeah. think, well, maybe it's worth it. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And keep in mind, uh, you bring in more money, that's also more uh, tax base that the Canadian government can tax. And right. that goes towards, you know, uh, of course, us taxpayers, which we benefit from, you know, health care, roads, et cetera, sure. et cetera. For sure. Although I'd like to be the one making the $25.8 <laughs> million, there's no doubt. We're in All the right. same boat, yeah. That's right. Okay, Tyler, thanks. Thank Tyler you. will be back in an hour. Talk a bit more business news for us. If you want to reach him, go to BIV.com for business in Vancouver.